Hello, and welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. So thank you so much for taking this time to be on this call and being a part of our We Choose to Thrive series. You're welcome. I so appreciate it. And it is very touching. You know, and I think all of us spending together and being a part of this is something that is so incredibly important. And that's why I'm grateful that others um, like yourself, myself, and the, all the others that are participating have the heart to share and the courage to share. Absolutely. You are the leader. So <laughs> it's really brought these women together and, and that that's how the circle will get wider. It's more of us standing together. It is. It is very much. Introduce yourself to us, Heather, and, and tell us a little bit about your past where you've come and where we are, where you are today. Okay, well, thank you very much, Becky. My name is Heather Egan, and I have been on the path of sexual recovery for most of my life. Like, I, I had been sexually molested by uh, an extended family member. First, it had started with a family member's father. And when I was seven years old, up until 13 when he molested me and the trust was there and my friend and I and her father went out three-wheeling. We were sitting in the trailer, my friend and I, and her father said, do you want to go for a ride? And she whispered to me, don't go. And I, trusting, you know, I went. And so as it was a secluded spot and that's where it happened. And then shortly afterwards, it started with the extended family member. And I remember so vividly, you know, it happened in the summertime. 13, you're starting your menses, you're developing. I put on a big hoodie because I just wanted to cover my breasts because I just felt so much shame. Then it, it started with my uncle at 13 and then lasted until I was 23 when I found my voice. It was a lonely journey, I told my mom and dad. And so they suggested to go and seek a counselor to find out how we're going to deal with this. And I would remember it was, you know, it was a woman, which was good, but it was kind of dark. Her office was within her home, so there was that comfortability about that. It was kind of dark and being by myself, covered in the cloak of shame. It was suggested to send him a letter to stop or further people would know. So he did stop. I still see him at Christmas time and he's employed in my family business. And my mother was upset because he came over the next day after he received the letter and was talking to my my parents and apologized and he uh, didn't know what to say to his wife and so my father helped him and my mother she stripped one upside and down the other that my dad had helped him try to concoct story as to why mm. um, he had come out this way to see us that's been my journey and of course bringing in partners that have that kind of abuse the emotional abuse I've had a little bit of physical but it's mostly been the emotional that I've been dealt with after having dealt with the, the sexual abuse so it's been a journey it's what we seem to attract unfortunately yes, absolutely we, we yes. know what we know yeah and it takes us a good while to kind of pass through that. And Absolutely. I'd really to gain our voice in mm -hmm. every way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where are you now in your healing path? Well, it just, it's an oncurring evolution. Like it, it really is. It's not that I don't get emotional or that you ever stop fully achieving experiences that trigger you, but I am on the other side. It's my goal and my mission to walk more deeply on this earth because when we've been abused, we get so much up into our head, right? That we're just not connected with anything that's going on below our shoulders, what our heart and what our power center is telling us to do. So it's my mission to be walking more grounded in this life, to be more passionate, to walk more deeply and feel more as to what beauty 
is supposed to be in our life so I think we've we've we have that underlying grief that yes that, that hangs on to so heavily to our souls absolutely and until we find that voice and until we make that decision it's really difficult to find that joyfulness in life yeah. that we really deserve yeah, that's the key word deserving we do deserve and we don't need to feel that we need to oh well this is my lot in life i'm never going to get over what happened right. we do have that choice of of living more joyfully so what is the most positive thing you've done for yourself in this journey of healing I think giving that joy, finding that joy that is so rightfully my birthright and finding that and realizing that, yes, there is more depth in this world to live, as well as starting my own small business, being of service to women who have been sexually abused. It's not counseling, it's not coaching, it's mentoring, and it's dealing with the arts rather than talking because mm. we can talk so much, right? Right. And again, we don't realize what has been stored in our body. Why are we attracting those men still or women or whoever we're with? It's, it's relationships at work, not necessarily intimate partners that, that we may feel triggered with. The art part of it through expressing in dance, in song, in a musical instrument, poetry, drawing, like what's behind me. You know, that, that just gets the body open and, and realizing that, yeah, I still have some, some stuff that needs to be resolved. How did you figure out this form of expression? What, what led you to kind of getting to this place where you're using these modalities to help others heal? Well, I worked with children for 27 years, and it was very much play-based and what the interest of the child was at the time. Rather than having a strict curriculum, okay, this is going to be the topic for, you know, this week and that week. And so when you really delve into what you enjoy, that's when the expression can come forward. And I started working with an intuitive artist a couple of years ago. Ever since I was seven, I, you know, played the piano and then just acclaimed other instruments along the way. It was interesting for me to dance. Like I just, I never really loved to dance, right? Because it was awkward at high school. And so I just never really did it more of it. And then I've gotten back into that and just how much the body can take over and have movement of its own. And as well as drawing, it doesn't mean you don't have to be Picasso or like mine are, mine are very simple. They're just stick figures and symbols and stuff, but it really gets me connected to, to what I need to let go. Very cool. So what words of wisdom would you give to somebody that is just starting out on this journey of healing? Somebody that feels all alone? Yes. Their heart is heavy. They don't see a real way out. They are searching for a way. Yes, absolutely. One step in front of the other. If that's talking to a friend, if that's going to see a therapist, trying to maybe get into a community. There's a lot of Facebook groups out there, yours as well as mine included, that deal with different kinds of abuse. There's a lot more out there than there was for me 30 years ago when I started on, on this journey. So I'd say try your best to to be loving and gentle with yourself as you can because it is going to be many forward steps if you can try and get the support for yourself like I, I had mentioned as in friendship or joining a forum on Facebook or a community where you meet once a week with other people that have been abused that's that's most important it is it's really important and it's something that takes diligence to stay on top yes. because it, there's there's going to always be trigger points yeah things that will come up that will snap you kind of backwards yes, yes. if you can surround yourself by with support in a community and it could be numerous communities because there's a lot available to us thankfully mm -hmm. i noticed on your google doc that that you sent me that you had read courage to heal Oh, yes, 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 yes. That was huge for me. And I still I still go back to that, you know, when I when I'm presenting things to to people, because I've been on the journey for a while, I sometimes forget what it's like to 
begin the journey of healing. So I go back to that to come more compassionate about what the person is going through in their steps. You know, I was in such awe because I didn't find out about Courage to Heal until just, just a month ago when one oh. of somebody I was interviewing, that was written years and years ago. Yes. I think they just had their 20th anniversary or something. I was like, why didn't I know there was this kind of help all this time, you know? Yes. And it's it's just because that's one of our characteristics. We, we don't want to talk about it. We have that shame, that wall around us, and we don't know that there's help out there. Yes. Today's world's a lot different because there is much more exposure. There is more opportunities of knowing that there is help. But many years ago, we didn't know we didn't know that there was such amazing help out there. Yes, so, absolutely. You know, it's really beautiful. Is there any- I also have um, a book for partners. If you're with a partner, what they can assist with in, in the process. Very beautiful. There was another book you mentioned, The Journey from Abandonment to Healing. By- oh, another awesome book. Okay. Yeah, I highly recommend that. That one is also getting into relationship with your inner child. And, and realizing that you can mother yourself, that it doesn't have to be only on the outside, the external, because you may not get that support that you're so craving. So to try and, and give that support, be a mother to yourself. It's, it has a lot of tools in that book to use as well. Wow, very good. Thank you. So are there any other words of wisdom you would you care to share before we conclude our interview? I don't think so. I, I think that uh, it's been full. Uh, I so appreciate that you've done this and listening to you speak. I think there will be opportunities that we'll maybe even end up working on doing some workshops together or doing great to help make this something that is brought out into the light and make sure that those that have gone through, through it no, there's a way out, there's a way to thrive, there's a way to be happy, and maybe create some exposure that the perpetrators don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> that isn't that a huge wish? Yeah, yes. at least yeah. make the awareness so that others know what to look for too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We're in 2016 now, and, and I really feel it's much different than you know when my Nana was in her years, and you just went to the doctor and you just talked about what you, what pains you have. You never talked about the emotional or, or the abuse that you're experiencing. And, and that's my wish is that this does not continue to be a taboo, all alone subject for, for people. That's right. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I appreciate so much you taking this time and I will be in touch with you. <laughs> thank you. And I appreciate you bringing us together, Becky. Oh, thank you. I, do, I appreciate you very much. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> this story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www.thewomanilove.com. If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong and uniting, can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world. We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal, but the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com. Also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.